People often find it difficult to pray because they have an exaggerated notion of prayer, not really understanding what it means and erroneously believing that it consists in very lofty thoughts which must be expressed in correspondingly elevated words and sentences, whereas the very opposite is the truth. How simple are the Our Father and the Hail Mary. How unaffected the thoughts and the words of the centurion, the leper, the blind man, and others mentioned in the gospel, who sought help from our Lord and were heard. Neither is it necessary for a prayer to be long to be perfect. It need not be said in any particular place or at any special time, nor need it be said kneeling or standing. We may turn our hearts to God at all times, in all places, and in any posture of body. Prayer means simple, loving converse between the soul and God, as between a child and its father. Yet, it is quite obvious that certain dispositions of soul are indispensable to this holy exercise. The sacred scriptures admonish us, in the first place, to prepare ourselves. This preparation is not difficult consisting simply in humility, sorrow for sin, a wish to improve our lives, confidence in God and His mercy, and freedom from hatred of our neighbor. During prayer, the chief things required are a realization of the presence of God, attention to what we are saying, sincerity, and fervor. If, while praying, we are purposely or consciously distracted, we become like those irreligious worshippers of whom our Lord said, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Finally, for good prayer, it is necessary that we pray with entire submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, who knows what is best for us. We should continue to implore God's help and grace as long as we live. Christ the Lord has said, We ought always to pray. Our prayers will be greatly enhanced in value and efficacy if we add to them works of charity and mortification. Prayer should be primarily directed to God in the three persons of the Blessed Trinity, but since the fruitfulness of our supplications depends solely on the merits of Christ, our Redeemer and Advocate with the Father, we should offer them in His name. Thereby they acquire the weight and influence which make them pleasing to the Father. That most perfect of prayers, the Our Father, contains all the things for which we should pray, and also indicates the order of importance according to which our requests should be made. Therefore, in the first of the seven petitions which constitute this the best of prayers, we say, Hallowed be thy name. Thus, asking that God be acknowledged and glorified and praised throughout the earth. In the second petition, we say, Thy kingdom come. That is, may we one day possess the kingdom of heaven, which God has prepared for us. And since this great kingdom can only be entered and enjoyed by those who do God's will here on earth, we say in the third petition, Thy will be done, begging that we may be enabled at all times to keep his commandments. In the fourth petition, we ask for our daily bread. We beg of God those temporal and spiritual necessities without which we can sustain neither the life of our bodies nor that of our souls. Thus far in the Lord's Prayer, we have been seeking good things. Next, we ask to be preserved from evils of soul and body, imploring deliverance from our trespasses and sins which would exclude us from the kingdom of God. We then pray for victory over temptation, which would hinder us from doing God's will. In concluding this beautiful prayer, we ask to be delivered from all those evils which might imperil our spiritual or temporal life, such as sudden death, famine, war, pestilence, and the like. By the use of the word our in the Lord's Prayer, it is clear that God wishes us to pray not only for ourselves but for others, and therefore it is also our duty to offer supplications for all mankind. In a special manner, however, we are bound to pray for our relatives, pastors, friends, and benefactors, for our country and its rulers, for the just and the faithful departed, for enemies and sinners. We should not omit offering frequent prayers of thanksgiving for the numerous and weighty blessings which God continually bestows upon us and on the whole human race, 
and thanking him particularly for the crowns of victory and glory with which he has adorned the Blessed Virgin and the saints. Thanksgiving and petitions are indeed the two principal parts of prayer, the former being quite as necessary as the latter. In fact, if we are not grateful for God's benefits, how may we expect that he will heed our petitions? The one, therefore, is indispensable to the other. Let us with all confidence have recourse to prayer, being assured, as St. Bernard says, that God will grant what we ask, or something better. <laughs>